Week 23 has started. We had injury news, blokes out for the season, interesting developments in the games on Monday. We'll recap it all alongside the one and only Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and if you don't want to know the score, look away now. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. Go and hit the thumb up. Ring the bell, subscribe here on YouTube as well. Double bang across all platforms, and we're ready to go. Two weeks to go until the end of the NBA regular season. If your fantasy league is still going, good luck to you. I know it is the final for default Yahoo leagues. So we're going to see how it goes. Just a quick announcement for scheduling. Tomorrow, there will not be a daily look-ahead show for Wednesday. You may remember back from November when my car got destroyed by a storm. Well, tomorrow is finally the day that I get to get it fixed. So in the morning, I've got to be out and taking that car to go and get fixed. So there won't be a preview look ahead show, unfortunately. Apologies for that. But the recap of Tuesday's games will still be coming through the day or when when it usually comes out. So we are here to talk about Monday, but we do have news to cover off first because some very important things did happen um, across the last year. When it says I last spoke to you, we got the news in San Antonio that Devin Vassell and Jeremy Sohan are done for the year. We did think that Sohan was out. I've said that many times. You know, as soon as that injury happened, and the discussion from Pop suggests that he was going to be out, and he is. He's done for the year. He's having surgery on his ankle. The Vassell one didn't expect that stress reaction in his foot. That's not great. We hope it's only something precautionary. He'll be fine for next season, but yeah, not ideal. We didn't get word that Keldon Johnson is out for the season, but he is out on Tuesday. I would suggest that Calden is out for the season, but they haven't announced that yet. So what does this mean? Well, we saw last game, no Vassell, no Sohan. So we saw the starters being the Discman, C.D. Arsman, and Malaka Branham started. We get more minutes for Bubble Champagne as well, and that's how it goes. But the Spurs have a terrible schedule. They play Tuesday, then it's Friday, Sunday, high volume days. That's it. And then next week, it's only three games. Bad, bad schedule. So while Branham... And Champagne or Osman, these guys might look somewhat appealing. And they are for Tuesday. Long term, I don't think you'd start them on Friday. I don't think you'd start them on Sunday. I'm not sure you start them next week either. So they're not a long-term solution, I don't think. Now, I would go with Champagne over Osman, over Branham, and then down to Wesley. And then maybe we get into a CD Sissoko at some point. But again, this is a one-day thing. I would not prioritize at this stage holding on to those blokes. In Utah, we know that Lowry Markinen is out for the season. I'm just going to go ahead here and say that John Collins and Jordan Clarkson are out as well. I don't know that. What I do know is that they are out on Tuesday with back spasms and back soreness. It is, um, the, I said this earlier, the luck that the Jazz have, it's unbelievably bad. That their three best and most experienced players have all suffered injuries at the same time. Just Unbelievable. So I don't think Collins is coming back. I don't think Clarkson is coming back. So I think the rotation you saw last game is going to hold. More minutes for Hendricks, more minutes for Sensible, more minutes for Kessler. The problem I have with this is tomorrow, they have put John Jujang back into the G League. They've put Micah Potter into the G League as well. So are we going to get Kyra Lewis? Are we going to get future superstar Taylor Horton Tucker dusted off? Man, that guy's bad. We're going to get Lucas Sharmanich getting backup minutes? Maybe. But the Jazz, like the Spurs, have a stinking schedule. They played Tuesday and then Friday, Sunday. That's it this week. Three games. Bad days. Now, again, Hendricks, sensible, great streams on Tuesday. But are they going to be startable for you on Friday or Sunday? Almost definitely not. Kessler, yes. George, possibly. 
Keontae, maybe. Like, maybe. Sexton, I don't know what he goes the rest of the season, but these are the things happening. Damian Lillard was out for personal reasons last game, and now he's out for groin soreness. Okay, what the hell does that mean? I know people always love to jump to a conclusion. Or does this mean Dame's out for the season? Absolutely not. It means he's out for the first game of a back-to-back against a terrible team. I would expect that Chris Middleton is out Wednesday, definitely out Wednesday, and I would expect Giannis sits Wednesday as well, but I don't know that yet. And then there is the news on Joel Embiid. We talked about this extensively earlier on in the day. He is on every injury report that is released today listed as out. Woj and Shams are making it seem like there's an outside chance that he does come back for Tuesday. I don't think that'll be the case. But then the next games are Thursday, Friday, so he's not playing both of those. He's going to play one of them for sure. So there is a ch- real chance here that you only get two games out of Embiid this week. Now, that is likely worth it. But it could also mean that his first game is not until Thursday. Or, worst case, it's Friday with 12 games on with limited minutes. And he plays Friday, Sunday to end the week. Yeah, you add Embiid. And if you wanted to drop Bumber and and Paul Reed, like, go, yeah, go for it. Like, their value is obviously ticking. But... I don't know. If he doesn't play Tuesday in beat, then it gets a little iffy because he will sit one of Thursday or Friday and then the Sunday. But you'd start in beat on Sunday. It just you know, changes the way that your lineup looks, obviously. I, well, I hope that's obvious anyway. What's going on on the waiver wire? Who have been the moves? Who's been added? Who's been dropped across leagues? Number one ad player was Big Grant Williams because Big Dick Nick Richards um, was out today. So Grant Williams got the start. TJ McConnell. Um, up 8%, Pacers playing today. you got Aaron Neesmith up 8%. These are just, I'm guessing a lot of this is just streaming for today or streaming for schedule benefits. Vasimisic, who was questionable heading into this game. I keep writing Vasile, but the Hornets, whenever they announce his name, they always write Vasa. So I'm just going to call him Vasa. It's like Vasimisic, Nico Batum. We don't have to use their full name if they don't use it. Um, yeah, Vasimisic up 8%. He, he should be rostered, yes. Andy Nempard up 7%. Not sure. Not sure that's a necessity, but I get it. You're just scrounging for games at this spot. And then Delano Banton up six. I didn't really think Banton would still be available in that many leagues, but he is. So you roster him, and I would hold on to him even through today because I I don't expect that Simons or Grant are playing again. Aiton is still playing, but who knows about those other guys? A lot of confusion there still. The most dropped players. Get that garbage out of here! Jeremy Sohan down 12%, obviously out for the season. Mo Bamba down 9%. Cool. Uh, Kyle Anderson down seven. He only scored two points last game, so people moved on, even though I think he had, what, three assists, a steal, and two blocks, or two steals and a block. But we, he's not a points guy, obviously. He's not going to score a lot, but he does a lot in other things, and the rules situation hasn't really changed. So I'm not sure I would have ju- dropped him in that many spots, but it's okay. Larry Nance, and, uh, again, not big production. We loved the schedule last week. I-, I wouldn't have dropped him just because he was playing today. So, look, you can just eke another game out. Like, a, a switching a guy that plays today for another guy that plays today, it's not really a great use of your ads, but whatever. He's not that good. Uh, Devin Vassell, yes, obviously. Then uh, Lou Dort, yes. Absolutely yes. Every single day of the week, yes. Lou Dort is a drop at all points. Yes. Today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. Sometimes we need that opportunity To get something off our chest, whether it's a big or small thing, certain things can really start to get to you. And it's important to let that out. And especially to somebody in your life who is unbiased. I'm not sure that your partner or your friends want to hear you go, mate, I added Lou Dort and the bloke had four points on 20% shooting. Why do I do this to myself? I know that he's bad, but I go back to the well every single time. Is that a rant from personal experience? You can decide. The people who need to hear you get these small things off your chest, it enables you to get, A, that stuff out, get that pressure relieved, but then focus on things actually more important, family, relationships, work. Deal with the problems there. That's where therapy can come in. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, there's never been a better time. Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible. It's not only designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule, it is flexible and suited to your schedule. It's entirely online as well. So visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. You can get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash locked on NBA. All right, let's look at the first game. It is the Boston Celtics up against the Charlotte Hornets. Some changes here because Boston, they are unbelievably hit with injuries at the moment. Jalen Brown was out, so Al Horford had to start. Amazing. They're awesome, Boston, very clearly, but the injuries they're dealing with are, are unbelievable. 
Grant Williams started in place of Big Dick Nick Richards in Charlotte. Uh, Richards dealing with plantar fascia issues. Now, maybe that is because it's a, um, uh, what do we call it? Uh, a back-to-back here. But we saw them shut big guys down towards the end of last season. Mark Williams is dead and like they've got other bodies buried on top of him so the sniffer dogs don't find him. That's the scenario we're at with Mark Williams. So I'm not, I'm not really sure what we do here with Nick Richards. Um, oh, that's not true. We can drop Nick Richards. What do we do with replacing him with Grant Williams is the question. We'll get to that in a second. For the Celtics, Slam and Sammy Hauser played 24 minutes. He had 25 and 5 with 7 triples on 69%. Giggity. Great. Love it. We saw, though, that when they were healthy, that this guy just played like 18 minutes. And the same goes with Pritchard, who played 28 minutes here. Now, he wasn't very good, 7, 3, and 5. It is risky to hold them and just roll them out there every game, and then there's a healthy team, and they play 18 minutes. How often will this beleaguered, injury-bug-struck team have a healthy lineup, though? That's the question. The mainstream media is not talking about this, about all the injuries that Boston is uh, accruing here. But we, we, we cover the big stories here. I legit saw a tweet about this from a Boston reporter saying the, the media just doesn't cover how banged up the Celtics are and how bad our injury scenario has been and our starters just haven't played together. Yeah, your starters haven't played together because you're choosing not to play them together. Bro. Do you want the mainstream media to cover it the way they covered the Clippers and Paul George and Kawhi Leonard? Do you want them to cover it that way? Those guys sitting out? I'm sure you'd love that, wouldn't you? Mm. Should tweet that at him. Anyway, Drew Holiday probably should have managed in this one. Two points on 9% shooting. Nine. Single digit. Nine. Two, five, and two. Maybe his shoulder needs a day off coming up. Al Horford, 15, and five. And maximum Derek White, 19, nine, and five. And Tatum had 25, and 10. Porzingis, 20, and seven, and five. And a lot of the same stuff. You just have to be very, very vigilant here uh, because there probably will be some other days off. For the Hornets, 43 minutes for Miles Bridges in a game that they lose by 14 points. It's a lot of minutes. 26-11, 26 and 11, eight assists, three threes. We're going to look back at Miles Bridges' counting stats at the end of this season and go, oh, yeah, bloody hell, they're good. But there's so much weird context surrounding anything that he does. And even what Brandon Miller's doing here, another 40 minutes for Brandon, 19 and five with three threes. The question is going to be what you do with Grant Williams. And he had 23 and seven, much like Sam Hauser, with two triples. He shot 63%. The minutes are good. And if Richards is out, I'd be okay using Grant because we feel more security in the minutes there. For deeper leagues, you want to look at Marcus Bolden, who had four and five in his 15 minutes. He was the backup center. Or Trey Mann, that is two absolute stinkers in a row. Four, four, and four is not good. 26 minutes is not good. If you wanted to move on from Trey Mann, you've got to be cutthroat. Like, this is two bad games in a row. Vasa Misic is clearly outplaying him. 37 minutes for Misic, who had 13, 2, and 10 on 39%. But Mann could step back up next game. But we're talking back-end roster guys. So if you want to move on, just get rid of him. Who cares? You will find somebody else to replace. Davis Bertans did his, did his thing. Eight points, two triples. That's the contribution he brings. While Poku had three points in 16 minutes in his return from uh, the illness, which kept him out of Sunday's action. All right, we're going to head into the, uh, the next game, which is the third game of the day. The old Memphis Grizzlies up against your Detroit Pistons. And surprisingly, there was only one starting lineup change in this game from their last one. Santi Aldama moved into the starting lineup for the Grizzlies and Jake LaRavia moved back to the bench while the Pistons trotted out the exact same group that they did the game before that. Did it work for either team? Well, we'll see. It worked for one of them. Memphis wins it. Is that working or is it failing? 110-108 for Memphis. The final score here. Jaron Jackson was absolutely abysmal in the last game. Like putridly abysmal. And in this game, he has 40 points, 7 rebounds, 2 triples, 3 steals, 2 blocks, 56% from the field, and a ridiculous 12 of um, of 14? 12 of 14 from the line. And I figure he'll be in the running for the monstrous line of the night. That is ridiculous stuff. He has now reached 65 games. What will he do? Will he sit out games moving forward? I've got no idea. Will Desmond Bain return? Will John Conchar return? I also have no idea. I think Vince Williams is done, and I don't think Marcus Smart is coming back. By the way, Marcus Smart, when they did the reevaluation, three weeks. Desmond Bain, three to five weeks. Bain is back. Smart's dead. Cool. I don't know what's going on there. Luke Kennard, 36 minutes. 19, three and eight for the Duck with five triples. If we knew that Kennard was starting, yeah, absolutely we love that. We just don't. But I don't mind an ad. And honestly, Brandon Clark is doing awesome. 15 and seven, two blocks, 23 minutes. 100% that is enough to use. Now, you worry about when the back-to-back comes up, but that is awesome. I didn't expect that it would mean 23 minutes for Santiago Dama, who 
Maybe I was correct, and he is bad. Two points, three rebounds. He did have three blocks, but he is bad. I think you hold, but now I'm not sure. Scotty Pippen went scoreless in 21 minutes. Sick. While uh, Jordy Goodwin had 13 rebounds as a point guard. He also shot 25% and had four points in 24 minutes. You can't rely upon Goodwin or Stevens or Pippen for 12s. And uh, Greg Jackson had 11, 4, and 4 in his 30 minutes. He's fine. He's more points league than category. You probably do hold him onto a roster, but, you know, there are issues. The other one there was LaRavia, who did move back to the bench, as I said, with Aldama returning. He had uh, 12 and 4 on 27% shooting. I wouldn't say that's a must roster. It's fine to stream, but everything still remains in flux. What about for the Pistons? 34 minutes for Cade Cunningham. They keep slapping the injury management questionable tag on us, which makes me think, again, he is going to miss games at some point. But 34 minutes, 36, 4, and 8, two steals and a block, elite shooting. Unbelievable stuff from him. Jaden Ivey, who's had knee soreness. He had 20 and 3 with 6 assists. Actually, pretty good game from him. And Shemesi Metu, they're bringing him off the bench, but 17 and 8 with two blocks. Honestly, probably a 12-team option here. The big thing is going to be what happens to the passport legend Jalen Duran. Because he lost a tooth and he didn't return after five minutes. He went scoreless, he had one rebound. Which kills you in a game cap, which I had him in my Roto League, which is not ideal. But I would expect that there might be a risk of some games missed here. So if you wanted to go and grab Jim Wiseman, you could grab Jim Wiseman. He had 10 and 10 with a block, Wiseman. I, I don't know that Duran's missing, but sometimes you might need to just be a little bit proactive. Because Wiseman will be usable if Duran misses time. We had 35 minutes from old mate Tosan F11. He had 10 and 5. He had a steal and a block. He had two triples. The takeaway here is that Tosan feels locked into 30 minutes. That doesn't mean that he's a must roster guy, but when you're scrounging around and there's no one playing, you go, geez, who am I going to add? Who's got a role? Well, it does feel like Tosan has that role. Troy Brown was scoreless in 18 minutes. Cool, he's bad. And Fournier played 29 and only had the five points there. So yeah, their roster is frustrating. There's going to be more stuff with Cunningham and, and Ivy, I'm guessing. And now the Duran uh, question gets chucked into that mix as to you know when does he return and if he misses time, how long is it going to be with this uh, tooth problem? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and NBA teams. You've got the quick bets, the live same game parlays. You've got exclusive props. You've got futures, all of your standard money line and spread and total bets as well. All exist at FanDuel. So go and check it out at FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel is an official sportsbook partner of the NBA, and don't forget to gamble responsibly. Okay, that'll bring us through to the uh, the next game that is up on the docket for us. We're looking at the Portland Trailblazers and the Orlando Magic. Uh-huh. No, um, no change in lineup for this one. Oh, actually, is that true? No, that is untrue. I unfortunately misled you with that information because there was, because Gaz Harris returned for Orlando and he moved back into the starting lineup, replacing Caleb Houston, who was actually out and unavailable to play in this one. The Magic end up getting the win, barely, 104-103 against the Blazers. Delano Banton off the bench played 35 minutes. He absolutely racked them up. 26-5-5, and three steals, two blocks, 50% shooting. Amazing that Banton is doing this. He's doing it without hurting your percentages. He is a must roster player. John Ray Aiton played 36 minutes, 20 and 12 for the snowman. He shot 56% and he didn't attempt a free throw. That's a big down John Ray Aiton game. What about Scooter? Sterling had 13, 8, and 9, which is all right. Eight rebounds is fine. Nine assists is good. But no free throw stinks. Defensive stats absent stinks. One three is bad. And he shot 38 from the field. I do still think that you want to roster him, especially in a points league. But that's obviously not very good. Jabari Walker, though. I This all ben, bends down. Maybe it bends down, but it all comes down to what happens with Jeremy Grant. Because we know Tamani Kamara is out for the season. If Grant is out for the season, like I expect, then Walker is going to get a start every game and big minutes every game. He had 18, 9, and 5 as the starting power forward. But if Grant returns, then we're just doing nothing with Walker. I don't mind an out of him. Like, I would prioritize him over, say, Chris Murray, who had 7 and 5 with 3 steals, or Raya Rupert, who had 11 points with 3 threes. The guy that I think has got a chance of coming back here is Shaden Sharp, not Simons, not Grant, not Thibel. And if Sharp comes back, it hurts Rupert, and it does hurt Murray, but we just don't know. 
For the Magic, Jalen Suggs is turning it on. 15, 3, and 7. Two blocks, two threes. Love what he's doing. Must roster play. Well, Wendell Carter Jr. got into some foul trouble and then went crazy. 17, 13, 5, three steals. He hasn't done that in weeks. He hasn't done that all season. Love it. Not super interested in it. I mean, you can always stream him in, but he's not an absolute we've got to have this guy. Gaz Harris played a lot of minutes, 34 for him, 14, 4, and 2. Solid enough, deep league stuff. Well, Wagner had, it's Franz Wagner, 20 and 6 in 32, and Paolo, man, his uh, presence on that buy low, sell high trend show, when I said I don't think this stuff holds, it has been a death now. 35% on 17 attempts, 1 of 2 from the line, 15, 4, and 4. That stinks absolutely. People are still rostering Mark Fultz in 12s. What are you guys doing? Get that garbage out of here. Scoreless, missed all six of his shots and had four assists. While Johnny Isaac had the two blocks. I don't mind an out of Isaac. Obviously, we can sort of pick and choose different options. Jim Metu's, Jim Wiseman's, uh, maybe a replacement center in Indiana as well. We'll get to that in a sec. Um, but some interesting things sort of developing and, and coming up uh, at the moment. All right, the next one, the Indiana Pacers. Big winners over the Brooklyn Nets, 133-133. 111. The Nets had no Cam Johnson or no Dennis Smith resting on the second half of back to back. Although I'm not really sure that counts for Smith because he played two minutes on Sunday. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Mikhail Bridges, only 29 minutes. He had 19.6 assists. Keeps the games played streak going. While well, Trenton Watford, again, 34 minutes, 21 points, triple one. Now he's shooting the absolute lights out, but they keep giving him minutes. At the very least, he's a 12 team streamer, Watford. And I think he might end up being a guy to add. Cam Thomas had a... This is a, one of the more Cam Thomases you'll ever see. 22-1-2. and two, No defensive stats, no threes. But he did go 8 of 9 from the line. While Schroeder only played 21 minutes. He sucks, Dennis Schroeder. Like, simple as that. You still roster him just because everyone who's out. But yeah, he sucks. The whole team sucks. We actually got 20 minutes of Lonnie Walker, who's been out of the rotation. He had 14 points. I don't care. Well, Dayron Sharp had 6 and 10. And Jalen Wilson played 24 minutes and 22 for Noah Clowney. But honestly, like, what are we taking away here? The big takeaway for me is Trenton Watford getting team high in minutes again. Second game in a row. Very solid production. He's 121st in 25 minutes over his last five games, and those minutes are pushing up. I'm a bit interested in adding him. The big thing to me, though, is in Indiana. Because Miles Turner hurt his finger. It looked pretty messed up towards the end of the first half. He shot free throws with the opposite hand. And then he left the game and never returned. Nine and six with five blocks for Turner in those minutes. I would guess that that, and it was on his shooting hand. I would guess, given you know, grabbing rebounds, blocking shots. Again, I'll say I would guess for the fourth time. I would guess that he's missing time here. It, honestly, that could end the regular season for him. It, or it, they might put a brace on it and he's able to play it. I think he's in real strife here. So I would add Jalen Smith. Now, Styx only played 16 minutes here because he got into a fight with Dennis Schroeder and got ejected. I don't think he's at risk of suspension, but you never know. He had 17 and 10 in 16 minutes with a block on 64%. And now the question's going to be, do I add him or Isaiah Jackson? Because Jackson played 14 minutes and had eight and three with two blocks. And the answer is, I think they're both going to be useful. Jackson only needs 21 minutes. If Smith gets 28, Jackson gets 21, they're both 12-team guys. I would take Smith over Jackson. Now, we could get dicked so hard here, like unbelievably. Uh, just the one of the worst dickings you'll ever get by them both playing like 19 minutes and then running Jarris Walker at center or something. But I feel all right that we're going to get Smith or Jackson getting good run, or maybe Miles Turner doesn't miss a single second. But I'm not, I'm not actually wasting this spot. McConnell just did it again, 10-4-8 with two steals. Haven't really seen a sub-20-minute player be this useful for 12-team leagues for a very long time. He's doing it at the moment. Siakam only played 24 minutes. He had 15-6. and six. Neesmith had 11-4. and four. Not sure you need to hold him. Halliburton had 27-4-13 and 13 steal on a block. Just a reminder that, yes, this man was a top-five player for multiple months before he hurt his hamstring. This is why. This is what he did. Toppin had 14-4. and four. Like, cool. Jarris Walker, 13 minutes. Cool. But, like, this game was over so, so early. The big takeaway, though, is going to be the Smith and Jackson scenario. I am looking at Smith over Jackson. There might be a bit more for Toppin, but I think Smith is going to be the guy that we look at, and hopefully there is no suspension. Let's do the next game, the late game, which one of the late games, which, of course, are the early games, given the weird schedule. The Hawks win comfortably over the Bulls, 113-101. Bogdan Bogdanovich did have an early trip to the locker room in the, in the first half, but he returned. Played 34 minutes. He had 20 and 4 with 6 assists and 2 blocks. He's been awesome down the stretch. Top 40 player over the last 2 weeks. The injury to Trey Young obviously helps. But he's top 85 for the year as well. While well, we finally got... Well, not finally. We had another one the other day. But another good Vic Krejci game. He only played 25 minutes. But 18, 4 and 3 with 6 triples and 100% shooting. 
Now, the Hawks were the team to target if you're looking for the low-volume days. Krejci was one of the guys you could have added, and if you did, it worked out unbelievably well. I wouldn't be putting a huge amount of stock in that continuing, but he was great. DeJounte Murray definitely cooled off. How many games has he had recently where he's had the same amount of points as shot attempts? 17 points on 17 shots, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, and no defensive stats. But what we did get was the return of Jalen Johnson. He came off the bench, he was limited, but at least he played. 11 and 4, 2 threes, 2 steals, shot poorly, which is disappointing. And you want to know how DeAndre Hunter went? Yeah, badly because he is bad. 8, 6, and 4 with 2 threes in 33 minutes. He shot 25%. This bloke sucks. He's so bad. Yeah, you got to still hold him for this week, but man, he's the Dennis Schroeder of the Atlanta Hawks. A guy that sucks, but the minutes are there, so you just have to roll with it. Corey Kispert, maybe, in fact. Fernando was solid enough as well, so if you streamed him and Krejci, well, you got a little bit of value there. 10-4-4 four, four in 22 minutes. We know that a Kongwu is out for at least this week, probably the rest of the regular season. And Trey Young, we're not expecting back this week either. And Kobe Bufkin returned. He had three points. He played 17 minutes, which is at least useful to know for deeper formats. We're not doing much there in 12-teamers, but... Good to see that he was able to return and get some playing time uh, immediately. I'd expect Jalen Johnson's minutes to jump up pretty quickly, and hopefully it means less DeAndre Hunter. For the Bulls, DeRozan played another whopping 39 minutes. He had 31, 2, and 5 with two steals. Kobe White shot poorly again, but he had 22, 3, and 3, so decent enough numbers. And Vooch, another only 31-minute game. Five points, 14 rebounds, 29%. You want to talk about blokes who suck? This guy, he's bad. The Bulls probably won't do anything to upgrade him over the offseason, but, but he sucks. He has been... Has he, would you say that Vooch has been a disappointment or expected value this season? I'd say he's been about expected value. Caruso racked him up, but only shot 23%. He had eight points, two threes, five rebounds, three assists, two steals, and two blocks, while Dasumu had 15-3 and three in his 36 minutes. A massive double-double for Andre Drummond as well. The big avocado had 13 and 18 in 20 minutes. Do not chase him. Do not chase that. They've got a shocking schedule. They don't play until Friday now, which is 12 games and Sunday, 13 games. That's it. So while this is great from Drummond, you can drop Drummond. You can probably drop Tosumu. You can probably drop Caruso. You could consider White and Vooch as well. Honestly, it's all about debating. Your 11th guy on Friday or Sunday, is that the difference between them and Vooch slash White? Is it greater than the value of getting someone in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. So many streaming opportunities versus holding these guys for marginal upgrades, maybe. I can't answer that for you, but I can at least put the idea in your head to examine it and investigate to see whether that does make sense for the way that your squad is is currently um, organized. So now the actual final game of the night. Devin Booker and the Phoenix Suns go into New Orleans. They win 124-111. Doesn't Devin Booker love playing against New Orleans? The, what's I think he's now at over 160 points in the last three games against them. Like something absolutely insane like that. They win it 124 Phoenix, 111 New Orleans. Booker has 52 points in 30, 39 minutes. He hits eight triples, which I believe is his career high. I was listening to, what podcast was it I was listening to? There was a podcast I was listening to. They were trying to guess what Devin Booker's career high was in three-pointers made, and it was like six. Oh, there you go. He had eight. I think he broke the record. He had eight triples, nine assists, one block, 68% shooting, 86 from the line. A ridiculously good game. Brad Beal, 13, nine, and six, two steals and a block. Very low usage, but a great game. Nurkic, 19, 19, four assists, two blocks. Fantastic. Durant, 20, and seven. 37% is not great, but great stuff. Grayson Allen, 11-2-4 with two dribbles. Love it. The bench, absolutely nothing. Drew Eubanks, nothing. Bowl, four minutes. Gordon, three points. O'Neal, two points. We're not rostering any of those blokes in 10 or 12 or 14 team leagues. For the Pelicans, um, Christian James McCullum played 40 minutes. The in- Ingram absence has boosted his minutes and value way up. Now, he didn't shoot well, but he had th- uh, 15, 5, and 9. Zion ended up with 30 points in 37 minutes, and Ken Murphy had 21, 6, and 4 with two steals and four dribbles. Good games there. Herb Jones did the defensive thing, of course. He had four steals. He didn't have a block, but he had four steals. He had the three assists. That's all good stuff. We got more minutes out of Alan Tunis here. Second out of his last three that he's gone over 20. Yeah, we didn't do anything good. 11 and a 7 um, on 25% from the line, but that's not terrible. While well, Nance had 9 and 7, he's he a drop. You could drop Najee Marshall. Uh, Jordan Hawkins had 3 points in 15 minutes as well. But what was interesting is second game back, the Dustbuster Dyson Daniels played 25 minutes. He had 9, 7, and 5 with two steals. Now, with Jose Alvarado out, Ingram out, there's a value role here for Daniels. 
I don't think he's anything more than a deeper stream guy for steals, but elevating his minutes that high up immediately is something that we can't just 100% like outright or straight just straight up ignore at this point. We can't. Not yet. Should we do the monstrous line of the night? We probably should. Is that time in the show? Two real candidates in the end for this one, but we do end up with Devin Booker. 52 points, three rebounds, eight triples, nine assists. Gets Devin the waiver wire, uh, the monstrous line of the night. The waiver wire line of the night, the best performer for a bloke available in 50% of leagues. And I'm using our advanced metric now for this on Basketball Monster just to get a better idea in terms of activity and leagues. And we do go to Sam Hauser, who had 25 points with seven triples. Great game. Hard to trust it, but great game. Your young gun of the night, best performer from a first, best performance from a first or second year player. We end up with, if I could find where I'm actually sitting, we end up with Brandon Miller. Not the greatest night from Miller, but the best young player. 19 points, five rebounds, and two assists while you're done of the night. This one is relatively simple. I think you, maybe you don't remember from the start of the show, but this man shot 9% from the field. Drew Holiday, two points, five rebounds, two assists, and 9% shooting. Let's look at the top six players overall before we get out of here. Your top six, of course, is led off by Devin Booker, closely followed behind by Triple J, Jaron Jackson Jr., Tyrese Halliburton at three, Cade Cunningham at four, Bogdan Bogdanovich at five, and Jason Tatum at number six. Your top six under 50% Ross and Sam Hauser at one. Luke Kennard, worth worth trying, but like, who knows? Uh, Vic Krejci, the schedule helps him. He was really good here. He's not going to be that good in each game. Chemezi Metu, I actually think that is worth an ad. Uh, Brandon Clark, Possibly as well. And then Dyson Daniels with his defensive abilities, maybe for those deeper leagues as a stream guy. Your top six players in Yahoo Points Leagues today, number one was, of course, Devin Booker, then Jaron Jackson, Cade Cunningham, Tyrese Halliburton, the big fella, Yusuf Nurkic, and Delano Banton. So normally, I'm not going to do this on every one of these shows running down because we do want to pay attention to needs and guys that we add and schedule and that sort of stuff. But I did think there was enough for me to put it up for today. I think we are considering James Wiseman, expecting maybe a miss from Duran. We are looking at Jalen Smith. Even though Miles Turner's x-rays were negative, we are looking at Smith and Jackson. And then Champagne is going to be streamable for San Antonio along with Osman. I don't feel any confidence whatsoever in Cam Johnson. I just don't think he's going to play enough, so I'd be okay moving on. And Okongwu's out all of this week. Probably most of next week as well. Of course, put Joel Embiid on that list if you want to go and add someone. But understand, there is a risk that Embiid only does play um, two games this week. So just be wary of that. And that brings us through to the end of the recap show on Monday. So go ahead and hit that YouTube subscribe button, thumb it up, leave your reviews on the audio side. And of course, all of you legends that are here, you've got to be double bangers. I know you're double bangers. I can sense the double banging coming through the screen. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.